Um, this is Katie Stroud, and she's an instructional designer and e-learning consultant um, based out of Seattle. What is the most common problem you see? There are actually three things, but the number one thing is that people forget that you're not just developing some kind of training. You're trying to solve a business problem. Uh, the number two thing is that everybody wants to put too much information into that. And, and looking back at the number <laughs> one problem, if you're looking at the business goal, then you can cut out all the unnecessary stuff if you really, really need it, you can put it in some kind of reference that maybe 1% of the people will actually go and read someday. <laughs> <laughs> the number three thing is that people have a hard time telling a good story. People learn with uh, stories, and you need, to, you need to build that up for them. They're, they're much more engaged if you explain how things apply to them in their world and bring it close to home. With all the information that we see, and there's so much visual stimuli and so much information, that's often how I associate. As I remember, I put two non, I put two things together, and then they're associated for me. It, it helps to create a container. If you give people containers that says, "Oh, this is something I need to remember," and then when you go to retrieve that later, there it is in that container that you put it in. I like mason jars myself. I mean, it's, it's <laughs> coffee. Mason jars, very cool. I love my mason jars. As you indicated, many people, myself included, have difficulty telling stories. A quick uh, example, let's say you're developing training around safety in the workplace. And you say, OK, here, here's your instructional design. People need to know X, Y, and Z. You, when you um, go from floor to floor, uh, use the elevator and and don't use the stairwell. This is a this is a list. This is not a story, right? So instead, imagine it's early in the morning. You got to work and there's not very many people in the office, and you're going to go from the fifth floor down to the third floor, and you decide you want to get your exercise, so you decide to take the stairwell. And as you're going down the stairwell, you get about halfway there and there's a uh, there's another person in that stairwell what are you gonna do in the first example I said don't take the stairwell by yourself in the second example we put people in that situation and let them realize for themselves that oh hey yeah that could be a dangerous situation get people to experience what it is you're trying to get across to them. could elaborate on the differences between the instructional designer and the trainer in the corporate world. Yeah, um, when I first got into the, the field of instructional design and the, the training world in general, I thought it sort of a luxury that a corporation would have both an instructional designer that develops the content and then a trainer who didn't really play any part in designing the instruction take that and go deliver it. There's a different skill set involved. Uh, I, I typically develop the training that somebody else takes and goes to deliver to someone else and if I can uh, make all the materials come to life for them, they can take that and interpret it in a way that uh, the audience um, will react to better. For example, my, my friend who is a, a trainer by trade, she, she has a great way of acknowledging what people say, asking them questions. She has a very warm um, personality that really engages people and gets them excited about the content and yet putting the content arranging it in a story that people can relate to and learn from is something I do incredibly well it's something that I enjoy quite a bit and get a lot of good feedback on 
didn't you start out initially in tech writing or tech comm or something like that? Sure. Um, and this also is a, a segue to one of the questions that one of your students had that what should we be telling our students to go into? My answer to that question is do what they're good at and what they love. It doesn't matter what fields are out there and, and what's going to be available for them. The um, business qualities you need to have. You need to be able to negotiate your price. You need to create a statement of work. You need to keep the cash flow flowing. I once had a, a month-long contract. Um, we agreed to a set number of hours and a price per hour and then uh, at the end of the month I submitted my bill. So I worked that whole month um, without getting any money and then I submitted my bill and the payment terms were um, 60 days after invoice so uh, I didn't get paid until three months after starting that work. I had some money in savings that um, and, and do that, that get me through those those delays. So there's there's that. There's um there's selling yourself. When somebody's asking for your help, um you can't just do it as a favor. You you have to you have to get paid for it. Uh, and you have to tell them why they should pay as much as you're asking for it. Given your time and experience in the fields of e-learning and consulting, what skills did you not have that you needed to develop most rapidly to do your work? One of the most interesting skills that I found that I, I wasn't very good at is the ability to ask good questions. I've always been someone that has observed things and for the most part I, I think I get it. Right, and and I I don't think of any questions to ask because I understand what somebody's telling me, and yet sometimes as I as I get into the work and really get involved, all the questions start to surface. But to really feed that that talent, to feed that that interest and, and passion. Okay, well, first of all, it's been an honor. I'm so glad you asked me to do this. This this has been fun. And what I would tell people is rub elbows with the greats, you know, make friends, network, focus on learning how to tell a good story, and don't be afraid to break the rules. If you break the rules, be able to tell that story about why it's okay to do it this way uh, because you'll face a lot of resistance if you just go out there and break the rules <laughs> really willy there's a there's a lot of people that um, are just kind of stuck on their ways and and the final thing is uh, remember to look at the the business goal and even if you're not in the corporate world if you're in the academic world there's still a, a business goal there there's uh, your clients are the students and you want to make a different you want your instruction to be worth it and back to um, being careful with dogma if you're too concerned on how things are supposed to be done it's a lot harder for you to see that that business goal well again this is Ben interview with Katie Stroud 